Hello, and welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. In this segment, we're going to deal with a confirmed person pinned under a train. Our lifting operation is going to consist of airbags, paratech strut, and cribbing. But prior to lifting, there are some safety considerations we have to take into account before we get into extricating this patient. First and foremost, if this is an energized line, we need to confirm that power has been removed through the transit authority and through the fire department dispatcher. It would also be beneficial to make contact with the train crew, either the engineer or the conductor, to confirm that the brakes are applied and the train is not going to move. Once those safety considerations have been squared away, we can get into our lifting operation. Prior to doing an airbag lift, we need to determine what the load is so we can make the proper selection in our airbag cache. On this car, we're extremely lucky because the weights are placarded on the side. As we can see, the car fully loaded is 177,500 pounds. When empty, the car is 85,500 pounds. We know this car is empty, so we know the beginning weight that we're working with. However, in order to free this patient, we don't need to lift the entire car, so we're not dealing with the true weight of 85,500 pounds. We're lifting a fraction of this car. In fact, we're lifting approximately 25%. So if we take this number, 85,000 500 and we divide it by 4, we come up with the actual weight that we will be lifting, which is roughly 21,500 pounds. That's going to allow us, that information is going to allow us to make the proper airbag selection in order to perform this lift and get the needed height. In reality, the way this patient is pinned, we don't need a tremendous amount of height, maybe 3 to 4 inches to perform the extrication, but selecting the proper airbag is going to be critical for success. The next determination we need to make is where we're going to lift the train from. And on this truck assembly, we have a few options. We could choose to go underneath and try to build up and lift off the axle. We could lift off the pedestal here. Or we could come over and build up underneath this U-carriage, put our lifting equipment here and lift here. The problem with the pedestal is our lifting equipment is going to interfere with the victim. The problem with the axle is it sits kind of high and now we have to put a man under the train. So I think the U-carriage here is going to be an optimal place to lift. So we're going to go ahead and set up our lifting equipment and perform the lift right off the U-carriage. So Tony and Russ are going to come in and they're going to start to build our lift stack. They're initially going to start building around the tie. They're going to use two by fours and ensure that the ground and the gravel is level so we have a nice solid foundation to build off of. They're then going to apply a solid base of 4x4s. Followed by a solid plywood plate. Another solid layer of two by fours on top of the plate, and then we're going to place our bags. In this operation, we're choosing to stack bags. We have a 30 ton bag and a 20 ton bag in our stack. We want to center those bags as closely as possible under the middle of the U carriage. And we're going to finish our stack with an additional plywood pad to distribute our surface contact area directly under the middle of the U-carriage. So our lift stack has been constructed. We've built it right up to the underside of the load, which is, which is important with airbags. We don't want to try to fill a void using the airbags. We want to use our cribbing so we can maximize the lift potential of the bags. So what we have set up here is a real nice setup. An additional thing we need to do before we lift the train is block out the train suspension. So Mark's going to come in with some 4x4 wedges and just take up the space above the suspension system. So when we lift, the suspension doesn't compress, requiring us to lift higher with the bags. The wedges are set in there nice and snug. Now the suspension has been disabled. In order to capture our progress as we lift, we're going to use the appropriate rated strut and we're going to use metal wedges under the train wheels. Up on 
bread. Okay, hold on red, up on green. Hold on green, up on red. Hold on red. Two by four under the metal wedge. We've exceeded the height on the metal wedge. Up on green. Hold on green. Strut set. Strut set. Wedge is set. Hold. We've achieved the desired height to free the victim. In this scenario, we lifted the rail car using high pressure airbags. We chose to lift off the U carriage because it's low to the ground and it has a nice flat surface to lift off of. Once we achieved the desired height, we were able to extricate our patient. Prior to extricating our patient, we captured our progress with the appropriately rated strut and the metal wedges in conjunction with a two by four under the rail car wheels for added support. I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. I'd like to thank Camp Partell and the New England Disaster Center for allowing us to use their facility. And I'd like to thank you for watching another edition of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.